Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Panel Attack Expert Monthly Tournament for June 2023. I will turn down the music for a second. I am your host, Buster Beachside. Today we have an amazing event for you guys. It's the first time we've been streaming the monthly expert tournament or any of the tournaments for that matter for quite a long time but at long last we are back and we are going to be having a wonderful event today ladies and gentlemen so without further ado let's get straight into the event and with that we will come over to this scene right here now this is the panel attack expert tournament this month we are beginning with a round robin format with two different groups and the top competitors from those two groups will be the ones to move on to the final bracket which will be i believe single elimination yes it will the format is first to five. First to five wins ladies and gentlemen Let's start spectating Dylon and GCT here. And of course it is level 10. And you'll see that uh, in the top we have a brand new little layout. That's actually in game at long last. Before we were using a custom overlay on the actual streaming software itself. But now our good friend Jambox has developed an in game overlay. That should hopefully either be in game soon or will be of use to us tournament commentators in the future. Looks very nice. I love it. Now then, currently we are 0 and 0. Oh, but never mind. GCT takes the first one at 3 minutes and 15 seconds on this one. Now, reminder that if you lose in the round robin, you are not out of the tournament right away. Instead, you have your points tracked. And the best performing competitors are the ones who will move on. So, just because somebody loses the first to five in the round robin stage here, it does not necessarily mean they're going to be out of the tournament. Hello there, Annie Cyborg. Welcome to the stream. We are just getting started here. And GCT taking the second game of this uh, first match here. However, Dialon is also a diamond-rated player. So, I believe he has a good chance against GCT. Now, you may also notice I... Uh, we have set up a YouTube stream this month, testing that out, see how well it works out. Nice five combo from Dialong. Ooh, and also a nice Shogun, where that second tier of panels comes down after the garbage clear and creates a chain. It's a nice way to transition into the next layer with a little bit of stop time while sending a bit of damage. All right, oh, this could be trouble. All right, he got it at the last second there. Meanwhile, GCT over here, he seems to be clearing some garbage. He was making a bit of a chain before. He is making sure not to keep his chains alive for too long because he wants to send all that damage as soon as possible. He wants to make sure he keeps Dialon topped out and under pressure. The longer he can do that, the better. Dylon may not be able to handle the pressure. And he wasn't. And GCT takes game three. Will Dylon be able to put himself on the board or will this be a clean sweep by GCT? We shall see. GCT, a well-known player, hailing from the great country of Germany. He is a master rank player. 
And looking at the signups for this particular tournament, let's see here. We have GCT, Chaos952, Ty, Dialon, Galadic97, Ultra Fighter, Pokemaster Shadow, Epic Yoshi, Ryan Rhino, and Dog in the Grass. So, oh, and I will be right back. I am receiving a phone call. Alright, I am now back from my phone call. Alright, so currently it is GCT up 4-0 against Dylon. Will he be able to put himself on the board? Now, as I said earlier, a loss in the round robin group stage is not necessarily, and there it is, the fifth win for GCT, but it is not necessarily going to be over for Dylon because it's round robin. He has to play... Uh, every opponent in his group looks like we are in two groups of five. We have ten competitors this month. And let's jump into Ultra Fighter versus Master Shadow. Just because they're the first up on the list there that I saw. So we have many matches going on simultaneously here. And a... Okay, now Reggie is on my lap. I'm trying my best to be professional here, Mr. Mutt. Reggie's my dog. He's a good boy. Alright, everyone, Reggie is going to be my co-op commentator. He's a very good boy. That's all you need to know about that. <laughs> Alright. So, Dialon will be moving on to fight his next opponent in the round robin group stage. Um, the more points you gain there, the higher your seeding for the upcoming uh, final bracket. However, the lower seeding players will be knocked out. So, it's important to try and score a few wins here and there, even if you're against an opponent that you feel you may not have a great matchup against someone who's better than you. If you're able to get a point or two against someone like that, such as uh, Ultra Fighter here actually taking a win against Master Shadow, which is very nice to see. Um, Master Shadow is a ranked player from the sunny... Uh, a master ranked player, I should say, from the sunny state of California. And he has been getting very good very quickly. Ultra Fighter also no slouch here. Both of these players are master rank. Um, personally, I saw Poke Master Shadow get up to master rank first, so I'm not sure how good Ultra Fighter is. However, he seems to be taking a couple of quick games against Master Shadow, which is very impressive to say the least. Welcome, welcome, Newsy. Thank you for coming. How is the audio, by the way? Everything should hopefully be alright, but let me know if the game is too loud or too quiet. Or if I'm too loud, etc. A very nice uh, combo chain there by Ultra Fighter. Meanwhile, we've got Master Shadow doing a nice horizontal chain. Those are very clean. 
He was playing a little bit too high, but he managed to chain his way down there. Oh, where's... Okay, he has a chain there. All right, there we go. Manages to make the transition. And Master Shadow working through a bit of factory garbage right now. Those single layers of panels not giving you a lot of clear time. Um, he does work through it, though. There's still some more... And now a little bit of a combo storm to work through. Oh yeah. Ultra Fighter is sending those factories. He is mass producing Poke Master Shadow. You see, when you send uh, small chains, such as Ultra Fighter is doing here, it creates these little tiny bars of garbage with some panels in between. And that is a strategy that targets your opponent's ability to react, your opponent's ability to uh, transition between garbage layers without relying on the immense amount of clear time you get from clearing lots of garbage, because there isn't a lot of garbage. So you need to know different ways to what's called a transition. You transition from one garbage layer into the next one. Oh, and that's an unfortunate mis mis swap from Master Shadow when Ultra Fighter takes a third. But I believe Master Shadow can take some games off of Ultra Fighter. He is one of the favorites to win this one. Ultra Fighter and Poke Master Shadow both, as well as GCT. Um, all players that could potentially take it this time. There are no... Um, very clear, like, Grandmaster players this month. Many times, the, uh, tournaments have been dominated by very powerful Grandmaster opponents. However, for the past few months, we haven't been seeing as many. Now, I'm not sure if that's because of time zone differences, or differences in schedule, etc. But it does mean that a lot of our lesser ranked players are having a chance at the expert title for the first time in quite a while and that's pretty refreshing to see oh now master shadow was in a bit of trouble there and uh ultra fighter does take that fourth one master shadow maybe having a bit of an off day we shall see i'm i wouldn't be surprised though if he makes a bit of a comeback later on At times, uh, Master Shadow has needed a bit of warm-up time. Oh no, what's going to happen? He didn't have anything to clear with. How unfortunate. But we will catch up with Master Shadow later. I'm sure he will work his way back up the bracket here in this round-robin group stage. Now let's look at... Let's try Ryan Rhino and Epic Yoshi. Two diamond-ranked players. It looks like Epic Yoshi is up by one. Let me catch up on chat here. Audio sounds great. Wonderful. We don't mind Dog as co-pilot. Wonderful. He's sitting on my lap quietly. He's quite a lap dog. Ultra Fighter with the juicy Shogun's. Yeah. We love to see it. I'm going to do my best to try and... Um, explain all of the terminology as I come across them. So if I say something that you don't understand, feel free to ask in the chat. And I will be happy to explain what I mean. We have a lot of different terminology in the panel community. Just talking about different ways to chain and so on. Time zone differences have made it tough. Oh yes, it's 6 a.m. in Japan. For me, in the Pacific time zone, it began at 2 o'clock p.m. Which is like right in the middle of the day. It's an interesting time for sure. For a while we had a rotation. And yes, uh, Epic Yoshi has the initial edge, but Ryan Rhino... Rye guy, as Newsy in the chat puts it, is tough once he hits his groove. Yes, I agree. 
Epic Yoshi is up by three. Oh, he's playing rather high stack. Does drop that chain. He tries to get um, the timing going there so that he could hit the chain, but just wasn't quite there. It wasn't going to chain automatically, so he had to do it that way. Oh my goodness, he doesn't have any stop time. Okay, he gets that plus seven, and now Ultra, er, uh, Ryan also out of stop time. You can tell because of the uh, jumping panel animation. When you see that, it means there is no stop time on the board. Okay. And now Epic Yoshi trying to find some chains, and he does to get that stop time. Makes the clear, and now he's got some time to figure out what he's going to do next. He sets those up. Okay, he gets the clear. He didn't have any stop time once again. Oh, this is very worry. <laughs> okay, he got the plus four. He got the four combo there. Ooh, Epic Yoshi cutting it nice and close when... <laughs> Newsy puts it very nicely in the chat when the panels twerk you'd better get to work indeed I'm gonna have to keep that one in my back pocket that's a good thing <laughs> that's a good thing I wonder if uh, new players in the community will understand <laughs> even if they don't I, I like that line Alright, this one going to the one and a half minute mark. Ooh, both sending a nice combo storm right there. You see the combo garbage turns into a whole bunch of panels. Which can be quite overwhelming to deal with. But Epic Yoshi making the best of it with some rather large combos. And Ryan Rhino could not take the pressure. Epic Yoshi up 4-0. On this expert tournament round robin. All right. Oh my goodness, that. Oh, 15 garbage per minute opener. He sends three lines of garbage in Ryan Rhino. He takes it like a champ. Right away. Nine seconds in. GG, that is Epic Yoshi up five, but remember this is still the group stage, so any player has a chance. Now then, let us take a look at, how about, oh, someone else just started. Let us look at GCT and Galadic. We haven't seen Galadic yet. He is, I believe, a platinum rated player. An up and comer. Oh, that is unfortunate for GCT. Looks like we are 2 1 in favor of GCT. However, Galadic97 has taken uh, one point and put himself on the board which is nothing to sneeze at against the master level player GCT. Now, looks like he is setting up... Oh! Ooh, excuse me. Setting up for the 8 combo, rather than the 5 that I thought he was getting. Uh, Galadic. Uh, meanwhile, GCT only at a very low stack currently. He needs to... Uh, Galadic needs to send a little bit more garbage to keep him topped out with that pressure. As he does... Oh, that was almost unfortunate for GCT, but he did have a combo in the wings. Uh, waiting to save him with a, just a little bit of stop time. Galadic about to do a nice transition into the next garbage layer. Creating some combos going into it so that he can create some stop time uh, that is very important to have. You'll notice the uh, multicolored bars to the left or the right of each stack and they seem to be filling and then slowly depleting over time. Those are your stop time. Now there, there are different colors on the bar that represent different things but to keep it simple here um, as long as the bar is not at the bottom you have more time to do things if you let it get to the bottom and you're topped out that's when you lose the game 
Oh, now you can see Galadic is relying on clears here. Uh, clear time. While your panels are popping there, you match three, and then they begin clearing like that. Um, you can't lose during that animation. However, it doesn't give you... Oh my goodness, that slide that Galadic just did was very risky, but it paid off. Will he be able to get the clear? He does. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was a 10 combo right there from the garbage for Galadic. Uh, meanwhile, GCT is still sending a lot of small chains and um, large combos, even small combos, combos of any size. Just a lot of combos. Looks like he's attempting to do a strategy known as Combo Storm, where you try to uh, overwhelm your opponent with those little bits of combo garbage that transform into a lot of different panels and can really disorient your opponent, and it looks like it has worked against Galadic this time. Don't worry about my uh, meme character changes. <laughs> All right, we're going into game five here. GCT three to one against Galadic. It was indeed spicy. And Newsy pointing out again in the chat, GCT has been a commenter for several panel attack tournaments as well. Very active in the community. He also tends to uh, stream his tournament runs on his own Twitch channel, so if you ever get a chance, go uh, give him a look. He streams with meme, meme characters. <laughs> if you want to see the tournament with memes, then uh, his stream is the place to be. Not to say there won't be memes with me, even though I try to remain professional. <laughs> All right, so GCT currently is topped off. I believe Galadic has sent... Oh, yeah, there it is. The combo's coming in, and it works on GCT. Now, another reason why the combo storm is effective is because whenever garbage falls um, on your side of the field, it creates a little shaking animation. Now, that shaking animation is actually quite important because uh, during that animation, you are not able to lose. So, you're able to utilize that for a little bit of extra time. Uh, but the larger the garbage you send, the longer the shake time. So, if you send an, an extremely large chain, for example, then the shake time will be, like, close to a second. You'll have a lot of time to react. You can see here on Galadic's side, um, he had a large garbage brick and it was giving him a lot of shake time. Whereas those uh, combo garbage, they give, they're little tiny boys, right? So they don't give very much shake time whatsoever. And that's another thing that makes combo storm so deadly. It's very hard to react to when there's not very much shake time. It can take your opponent by surprise. And then even once they clear it, they need to deal with all of these new panels that they just got, which can be very disorienting, as I've mentioned before. However, it can also be quite viable to send large garbage, because then you can um, set up a lot of combos while your opponent is working through the large garbage block. Like so, Galadic is currently working through this large garbage block, and once he finishes getting through all of that garbage, then all of these combos that uh, GCT is putting out is going to fall, and there they are! Um, there were a few small chains interleaved there, and chains do fall first in panel attack. So all of those combos are still queued up on top. There's a lot of garbage at any given time in these higher level matches. You can see as soon as Galadic has a chance to breathe, more garbage just falls down. There are some of those combos coming in. Some more combos. Uh, two chains, or maybe um, seven combos. Because, uh, fun fact, 
a two chain and a seven combo give the same exact garbage which has uh, led to a bit of a meme in the community that oh those combo storms from both players and it just barely works on Galadic there um, I was saying something <laughs> about the combo storm I think uh, but the moment has passed in any case it's a good strategy that, as well as the factory that I mentioned in one of the previous matchups here, you see Galadic is working through a layer there. There are different ways that you can transition um, between garbage layers. One of the more popular ones is known as the Shogun, which is named simply after the player who um, discovered the technique or invented the technique. And what it is, is you see up above the garbage, well, it's hard to explain it while a match is going because things, the, the state of the board changes so quickly, these high level players. Um, but say on GCT's side here, he's going to make this next garbage clear, and he's going to have a couple of layers. So you see he has some garbage and then some panels above that. So we like to think of those as tiers. So he has tier two. He has a purple, a dark blue, and a light blue on tier two. And if you're clever, you can utilize those panels in such a way, you can set them up so that they will do a chain with panels that you set up on below the garbage so that it makes a chain and chains in this game will give you just a little bit of stop time and getting that stop time will allow you to set up your next clear in order to um, get to the next garbage before you run out of time and die because you just haven't found anything there are other ways to set up transitions as well, for example, the classic garbage clear, as you can see here, um, where you simply line up two panels underneath the panels that you can see are about to fall. However, that's very hard to do when you only have one line of garbage uh, transforming, because if only one line is transforming, it doesn't take very long at all for it to actually finish doing that. Ooh, and that's uh, pretty lucky on Galadic's side. He got a, a few panels right where he needed them in the garbage transforming to create some large combos. Oh, okay. GCT looked like he was in trouble for a moment there, but he was never sweating. Uh, Galadic over here, there we go, he gets some combos going, now he's relying on some three clears and some shake time, and that's more than enough to make it to the next garbage tier. Ooh, those are some nice chains coming out from Galadic, that's going to send a lot of uh, pressure really quite quickly. Ooh, GCT sneaks in a, a cheeky raise right there. There is a little gap in between garbage from Galadic, and GCT was able to raise and get a few more panels, which is nice to have. Um, having more panels is usually... Oh no, Galadic! He got himself locked out. There was a singular clear right there, but I don't think it would have done anything. And GCT takes this set. However, Galadic was able to put himself on the board. So that will help him out. Um going from the round robin into the group stage and that is GG so let's take a look here um, I want to look at the standings um, no I'm in the wrong place here that's okay let's move on to oh we haven't seen chaos or tie play yet let's move in and see what they're up to they're a minute 25 into their first game here now, Chaos is a master level player, 
And Ty is a longtime player and speedrunner. He's in the speedrun community for this game as well, with a lot of top times. Um, he is a diamond level player. So they're only a singular league apart. Chaos has been improving very quickly. He's a very strong player. And it currently looks as if they are pretty even on garbage spread. They are sending similar amounts. They're both playing very high stack at the moment. Uh, but now Chaos lowering his down, and there's the combo storm from Ty, but it doesn't quite work. It wasn't able to top him out. He's going to get that four combo for the chain. Wow. Unfortunate that that was a uh, seven combo. Oh, I believe I was mentioning that before. Seven combos are something of a meme in the community because of their inefficiency. And Ty takes the first game with a combo storm. Now, a, a seven combo sends a single bar of garbage, um, the same as a times two chain would. And those create, for whatever reason, the frame data in the game. Um, a wide bar like that will create a significantly more shake time than any of the smaller combo garbage sizes, like those little... Ooh, that was deadly on Ty's side. That little tiny uh, combo got in there between all of his panels and just messed with him until he died. That was brutal. Oh, that was a little bit of lag there. Luckily, we have rollback netcode, and so it sped itself back up. <laughs> One of the great things about panel attack, we do have that nice uh, roll back netcode so that if you are not on the greatest connection in the world, it can sometimes handle it. Of course, there's only so much you can do when you're just not sending any packets, but that be how it be. So, <clears throat> those those tiny combo garbage, like I mentioned, they give a lot less shake time. So combos are usually nice to do because they can target your opponent's reaction time and give your opponent less time to, well, less time to react, as I was mentioning. Um, however, the 7 combo, oh, that's unfortunate from Ty. If he just had a little bit more time, he could have downstacked that. He had some greens uh, lined up to clear, but he did not have the stop time lined up. In any case, I think the thing I was saying about combos was pretty clear. Um, I have an energy drink, but it hasn't kicked in yet. Let's say that. <laughs> Ty usually hangs out in VC and is a long-time and trusted member of the community, says Newsy, and that, that is very true. He is one of the old-school players. Absolutely. He's been here for a long time. He's a, he's a good guy. He's been to a lot of um, physical events and things. I've seen pictures of like them playing sets of panel on the Super Nintendo at places like GDQ or PAX or things like that. Ty and BB Forky are two two very long time community members, as well as many others. I could I could name names forever. Lots of good people here. Alright, oh, that opening flurry from Chaos does take out Ty. Now it is 4-1. to one. Uh, Ty is on the board, so he's going to be looking better going into uh, the bracket. Hopefully winning one of those spots in the, the final bracket. I'm not sure if it's going to be a top 8 or a top 4 this time. 
um, based on the number of participants. Let me find the actual uh, bracket this time. Here we go. Now we have uh, group A and group B. We have two groups of five with ten total participants this month. So it says, looks like the top three will be moving on from each group. So we'll be having a top six if I'm not mistaken. I may still be mistaken, but I, I'm not sure. All right, we've got Ryan Rhino versus Master Shadow here. Let's take a look. Ryan Rhino on the board with one. However, Master Shadow has the advantage with two. I was worried for Ryan for a second there. It looked like he didn't have a lot of time, but he managed to make it. This game can be stressful to watch sometimes and stressful to play, but it's also a lot more fun than it is stressful. I'll say that. <laughs> Of course, these players have been playing for a very long time. Level 10 is very brutal, but once you get used to it, you kind of... Yeah, over time, the more you play level 10, the more you find yourself getting used to it, and you're just able to deal with these really brutal timings of having no extra um, leniency while you're topped out. If you're topped out even for a moment without any stop time or clears going on, that's it. It's over. And when I first came into this community, I thought it was very, very brutal. And it is. A lot of new players find it extremely hard to transition to level 10. Um, but the issue is just that the level of competition in this community has gotten so high over the years you know, uh, Panel is such an old game now. Players have been playing for many years and have gotten opportunities to get very good at this game. And so it's gotten to the point where it's necessitated that we play on these brutal skill levels at, um, at the highest echelon of competitive play. Now we do have uh, novice and advanced tournaments that play on levels such as level 8, and some even as low as level 5. So don't hear me saying that you have to play on level 10 in order to play competitively. We have lots of different events for lots of different skill levels, and we're very happy to see any new members in the community, no matter what level they play on. They can play at level 1, and we're very happy to have them here. Now, this this match, am I am I seeing that timer correctly? Six minutes and forty five seconds between Ryan Rhino and Master Shadow here. Ooh, get your popcorn, boys. We are going to strap in for a long one. This is Panel Attack, the movie today, ladies and gentlemen. Ryan Rhino and Master Shadow, both masters of staying alive here. Like I mentioned against, um, in that first, um, that first matchup we were looking at, Master Shadow versus GCT, once Master Shadow gets on his groove, he is a lot stronger than he was making himself look earlier. A sleeper, if you will. Master Shadow, also well known as um, a mobile player, he plays with a excuse me. He plays with a Bluetooth controller um, using an Android phone, which is something you can do with Panel Attack. It will run on Android phones. It's a little involved to get it set up because it's not on any of the official Google Play stores or the App Store or anything like that. Um, but it is possible to do because Android. And that is how Master Shadow plays the game. It just goes to show you don't even need to have the greatest setup in the world in order to become one of the best in the world. It is possible to use a controller, wired or Bluetooth or otherwise, to play Panel Attack. Poke. Newsy says, 
Poke will beat you on a flip phone on McDonald's Wi-Fi if you're not careful. Yeah, that really is the vibe <laughs> with Poke Master Shadow. The mobile warrior. This is going on nine minutes, this game. We stumbled upon an accidental banger, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. Who is going to win this marathon? Ryan Rhino versus Master Shadow. Their scores really aren't that too far apart. These may be two very evenly matched players right here. What will it take to end this game? Combo Storms have been coming out from both players. Maybe one of them needs to switch tactics here. Perhaps going for something similar to a factory. Or even just going for a mix-up of some kind. Maybe just sending a large chain. Oh, but unfortunately Ryan Rhino looks like he did just an unfortunate miss swap. And it ends at 9 minutes and 44 seconds. Another 15 minutes, that would have been 10 minutes right there. Oh my goodness, it seems like they need to uh, take a moment to recover after that one. Oh my goodness. Ryan Rhino in the chat. No! <laughs> That's unfortunate. Nine minutes. Now that one was drawing some eyeballs. Reminder that the stream this month is on both Twitch and YouTube. So the VOD should be available automatically right away. Let's see here. Now Master Shadow spent a little bit of time um, without any stop time there. But luckily he wasn't topped off so he didn't have to be too worried about that oh my goodness ryan rhino also spending a little bit of time topped out or not topped out he was not topped out he he didn't have any stop time oh but that's unfortunate this time ryan rhino didn't have any stop time and he was topped out and that will close out game number five now we're going on to game six with Master Shadow up 4 to 1. It's looking like Master Shadow may be able to take this. Uh, reminder, it is first to five sets. So this is match point for Master Shadow. However, we're still in the round robin stage. So if Ryan Rhino takes any extra points, even if he is not able to make a comeback and close out the set for a win, um, any extra points he can take at this stage is going to be good for him. Meanwhile, Master Shadow not topped out. He's able to do whatever he wants and he gets that big ol' lag chain, that delay chain, with some nice juicy combos in between. And unfortunate, Ryan Rhino's next attack just still wasn't enough to top him out. And unfortunately, Ryan Rhino does fall to that large chain from Poke Master Shadow. So, let's see here. It looks like um, each player should have four matches. So, that was the final match of Group B. And we also have Ty versus GCT. Still going on in Group A. It looks like GCT only has two matches reported. He still needs to finish his match against Ty. And then he needs to play against uh, Chaos952. Looks like this set has been going for quite a while now. It is 3-2 in favor of Ty. That's a little bit of a upset right now because... Ty being the diamond ranked player versus GCT the master player. Um, there was even a time when GCT had enough uh, MMR to make it to grandmaster rating. Of course, skill is known to fluctuate. Um, 
just because you are a specific MMR doesn't mean you're always going to play at exactly that level, you know. Um, of course, your overall level of play is going to be higher than somebody who is, for example, a Platinum, right? Even when you're on a bad day, you can usually beat someone who's a league or two underneath you. However, um, with Panel, it is very mechanic, mechanics-based um, at the highest level here. So, one little slip-up, um, one little miss-swap. Any little thing can cost you the game just like that with Ty, and now it is tied up indeed with three to three. Alright, I gotta, I gotta rein back the volume here. I'm starting to feel a little tickle in my throat. <coughs> Reggie is still here, by the way. Reggie's still on my lap. He's a good boy. He's my little guy. He's a little Chihuahua Terrier mix. While I have the chance, I have to... I have to tell everyone about my son, Reginald. <laughs> oh, I'll be fine, Newsy. It's just been a while since I've done a stream... You know, talking at streamer volume. <laughs> I tend to try and talk loudly to keep my energy up but my uh my vocal cords ain't used to that and they're like what are you doing what are you doing uh just just deal with it just deal with it now this match has a lot of spectators right now GCT needs to play uh two more matches this one, and then one more after this. Ooh, that was a good reaction by GCT to get that plus five. Alright, sets up for that garbage chain. In fact, a delay chain right there. They, if, um, panels fall in such a way that they make chains at slightly different timings, they will create multiple chains at the same time. Um, however, the game is not capable of tracking two different chains at the same time. So what it does instead is it will simply add on to your current chain and doing it that way will allow you to chain much quicker. So it'll be like three, four, four, five, something like that. And that is another win for Ty. It is match point for Ty. This is quite a close match right here. It almost makes me wonder if there were any uh, banger long games in this set before that we missed while we were watching the last long banger. <laughs> Ooh, that combo storm early on from GCT, but Ty was able to weather the storm. Ooh. He got you. You gotta love the Pokemon Puzzle League characters. We also have the uh, original Panel Day Pwn characters, and um, I think I have the Nintendo Puzzle Collection versions as well installed for this one. As well as the stages. We have a very good modding community. Now, the game does not come with all of these uh, characters and backgrounds, however, you can add them to your game. If you're on the Discord, we have a channel called Link Graphic Sounds. If you go in there, there's also a Google Doc that you can look through that has a lot of different mods that you can install. Have some nice videos that will give you tutorial through how to actually install all of these things. And all of these mods are actually community made. Obviously, they took the actual assets from the official panel games, um, but they did need to be created by somebody. 
And there is the final W for Ty. It was crazy, Ryan. We were watching that. <laughs> that was amazing. So I believe the final matchup of this round robin. Yep, Group B is complete. Now it is GCT versus Chaos. And there they are. All right. So following this, usually we have a little bit of a break um, before we head straight into the bracket. So this will be our penultimate. No, this is actually... A oh, Chaos taking an early game at seconds 12. Those early losses are always painful, especially in bracket. You know it's preventable. But a lot of times it's just you you're trying to create an opening as quickly as possible, you know. The game begins, you want to send your opponent garbage as soon as possible. The longer you can keep them topped out, the longer you can keep them pressured, the better your chances are going to be. And so sometimes, at least speaking for myself at the very least, sometimes you try to rush your opening chain just a little bit, you end up doing a little bit of a miss swap or maybe even just a miscalculation of whether or not you can do the chain that you're trying to do. And you end up dropping the chain, and then your opponent drops a little bit of garbage from their opening, and because you haven't chained as much as you would hope, you're a much higher stack than you would hope, so it doesn't take a lot to top you out. And then, if there's just a little tiny bit of combo, little tiny combo garbage sends very little shake time, and before you know it, you're just dead. You're topped out, and you don't have any shake time, because those combos give precious, precious little... Yeah, it would have been so cool if that 9 minute game... Ryan Rhino is in the chat now. Oh, Chaos dying to a large boy. To a big fat garbage boy. GCT taking out the garbage. You know, as you do. Now that was a very interesting looking opener from Chaos right there. It, that was 29, almost 30 garbage per minute. Now he's up to 33. Wow. 30 garbage per minute opener right there. Uh, meanwhile, GCT hovering around 15 to 20 garbage per minute. Not quite topping out Chaos. GCT just barely holding on, not topped out. Of course, uh, players at this caliber are very used to playing while topped out. So, in this situation, I wouldn't say GCT is particularly sweating or anything. However... Um, as I mentioned, um, the more you are topped out, the more your chances will be that if you make just any small mistake, you could be punished for it in the worst way possible. I saw a Shogun for GCT there, however, he didn't do it. GCT, a player well known for rejecting the notion of the Shogun. GCT will not be joining the Shogunate, ladies and gentlemen. That was a nice slide, though. Luckily, it wasn't too uh, risky to do that. I think he might have been in a weird spot had he missed that, but he did hit it, so no worries there. Meanwhile, on Chaos's side, topped out. Ah, oh, there's a combo storm popping, and now there's lots of panels just all over the board creating chaos, and he's just trying to find a clears here and there. There he goes. He found a lot of three clears to buy himself time until he could find some chains, some combos. Oh! Oh! Chaos, he's got to find something to clear with, and he does. And now, that was a nice transition right there. He set up those yellow panels so that as soon as they fell, he could swap them into that four combo and transition into the next garbage clear is a beautiful example of a transition and now a beautiful automatic chain being set up however he he cuts it early because he wants to send that garbage um he notices gct is topped out he wants to keep him that way 
So whenever he starts a big chain, he says, no, I don't want to create a big chain. That will give GCT a lot of stop time. We don't want to give our opponent stop time. We don't want to give him any time whatsoever to uh, clear his way through all of this garbage that we worked so hard to send him. So if we find ourselves on a chain, just cut it early. Cut it early, send a times three, maybe a times four, and look at this. GCT is about to have a massive factory right here. Look at this layering. Oh, but there is a clear on tier three, now tier two for GCT. It looks like he's not going to need to use it, however. He does not. In fact, he manages to utilize those panels that were a mid-tier clear to clear into the very next layer of garbage. GCT, like I said, master rank player. He knows how to deal with these sorts of transitions. He's done it many times. And that combo storm is kind of unfortunate from Chaos. A lot of uh, four combos there. They did not layer very well. Um, four combos because they are three wide. If you send them one after another, especially with the way um, the garbage queuing works, uh, four combos will all fall at the same time and they'll fall side by side. So you see right here, these two four combos are creating only one line of garbage, whereas two five combos would be a little longer and they wouldn't be able to fit next to each other, so they would have created an extra line towards topping your opponent out. And GCT taking game number three. It's Tracy versus Furl. The match of the century everyone's been waiting for. Saifa! All right, we have both players opening with almost exactly the same garbage output. Uh, GCT just now bringing his garbage per minute up a bit, but Chaos following suit. Um, Chaos does have a bit of an awkward second tier to work through right here. Oh, unfortunately, okay. It, he did not get a chain or a combo off of the garbage clear there, but he was able to get a chain and now here is a lot of combos that um, Chaos just cleared and now he has a lot of panels on the board to work with. Something that can be very hard to deal with. Um, you get that decision paralysis. You see so many panels on the board and you're not sure what to go for first, but um, higher level players know just how to lock in, find something that looks good and focus on that. Try not to get too overwhelmed. Oh, look at all those four combos that just fell on Chaos. The layering, not so great. However, on GCT's side, there is almost a sneaky little four combo that got into his stack and caused some mischief. I will mention um, earlier, I was talking about the seven combo and how it's inefficient. Well, if the seven combo sends such inefficient garbage, what about larger ones, right? For example, the six combo sends a five wide block, I believe. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, it does. The seven sends the six wide one, which the well is six wide. And then what does an eight combo do? Because you can't get any wider. Well, an 8 combo will send the equivalent of a 4 combo and then a 5 combo. So it actually creates two lines. Um, and they are the smaller variety of garbage. So they create less shake time. Although because it is two different uh, garbage blocks falling, the shake time is a little more than usual. It The amount... Uh, depends on how far the garbage actually has to fall, so it's not um, an objective measurement how much shake time a plus 8 creates. But also, plus 9 creates similar um, shapes, where it's plus 9 creates two fives, and going up from there, larger and la larger combos will create 
uh, more and more garbage, like small garbages. Newsy says it was a plus eight that uh, finished chaos in that last one. There is a spicy seven combo from chaos while I was explaining the seven combo. <laughs> So currently GCT has the advantage here, 3 to 1, Chaos still has an opportunity to come back from this, um, even if he doesn't, Chaos is the second biggest favorite, let's see, currently we have GCT at 2 wins, 1 loss, Ty at 3 wins, 1 loss, and Chaos at 3 wins. So, if GCT were to win this, we would have the top three in Group A with three wins and one loss. And it looks like that may be the case. However, Chaos still has one more game, an opportunity to win one more game. Of course, the, the set losses are the biggest thing. However, um, when there are ties... Um, the important thing is the amount of games won. It looks like we have a very clear top three moving on from Group A. In Group B, we have Ultra Fighter with four wins. He didn't take a single loss. Master Shadow, three, to, three and one. Epic Yoshi, two and two. Ryan Rhino, one and three. And then Dog in the Grass, unfortunately, looking like he got swept here. Um, meanwhile, in Group A, behind Chaos, Ty, and GCT, we have Dialon, who is at one win and three losses, and Galadic. Actually, a bit of a surprise seeing him at uh, four losses here, but it is a stacked field, and it looks like GCT does take that final game. Well played to all participants. So, our top three in Group A is rather stacked right here. Top three in Group A, three wins, one loss, each one of them. So, set to advance to, um, hang on, let me add a window capture so I can show you guys the thingamabob. Let's see... Do that. Do that. Add. Capture. I know what I'm doing. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. So here we go. Don't mind my pre-stream music up there. So we have GCT. Chaos 952 and Ty from Group A set to advance to the final stage here. And in Group B, we have Ultra Fighter, Poke Master Shadow, and Epic Yoshi. Uh, so that is going to be a good tournament run from Dialon, Galadic, Ryan Rhino, and Dog in the Grass. Thank you guys ever so much for playing. But you will be sent home today. All right, we're going to be taking a short break. Um, I'll go ahead and take a look at this match right here. So we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. I'll let you guys spectate um, Hecate and Sarah. A nice level 8 match to unwind with. Oof, pardon me. All right, while we get um, the final stage brackets created and seated and all that good stuff, we're going to take a short break. And I'll be back once our tournament organizer, which I believe is actually Chaos today, he's being the tournament organizer and he's also playing. All right, so he will be setting up the next brackets 
And I'm going to go get some water. Doke, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we're just about ready to start our first match in the final stage here. It is going to be Kapow! Pokemaster Shadow versus Ty! Okay, ladies and gentlemen, well, I gotta tell them I'm ready. They're asking me if I'm ready, and I'm ready. All right. Pokemaster Shadow versus Ty. Here we go. All right. Here we go. It is the first match of the final bracket top six. On the left side, the old school speedrunner legend, it's Ty. And on the right side, the next generation player on the mobile phone makes some noise for Poke Master Shadow. Reggie is giving me the strangest look right now. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, Ty says one sec. That's the classic line from Ty. He says one sec in the in the Discord chat. He goes and he makes a five-course meal in the kitchen, and then he comes back. All right, he says he's ready now, so let's get started. Let's make some noise for top six. Come on, people, let me see your emotes in the chat. Show me your hype. As soon as the match starts... I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the Discord. He says they can start at any time. There we go. Dialon knows what's up. All right, Ty is readied up. And here we go. Match one. Game one. These two players have very similar ratings at the moment. Uh, but neither player starting with very much of a an opener right there it looks like the second volley is the one that's going to be the deciding factor here master shadow throwing in some nice six combos right there Ooh, a little bit of a combo storm but not enough to top tie out it's going to have to do a little bit more than that oh that was unfortunate by Ty. um perhaps a little bit of a miss swap not the greatest uh down stack in the world but that's okay. It is first to five for a reason. So now let's see. Both players going for a pretty nice opener this time. Now, of course, I do have to note the tournament nerves can be palpable. And I know when I've, when I've played in events, I almost always get a little bit of the nerves. It never seems to go away entirely. It's something that you kind of have to get used to. No matter how long you've been in the community or how high your ranking is. So, both players 
um, sending pretty good amounts of garbage. In fact, Master Shadow dealing with a nice factory here. Oh my goodness, he doesn't have a lot of time to do that, but he manages to make it work. Oh my goodness, he's making those clears just to stay alive, and he manages to find a nice combo to get the garbage clear. Meanwhile, on Ty's side, ooh, nice delay chain from Ty. Um, he is not topped out, however, Master Shadow needs to be sending more garbage right now. Because Ty, meanwhile, will be doing whatever he wants to do. And it looks like whatever he wants to do is sending lots and lots of combos to keep Master Shadow on his toes. However, Master Shadow seems to be working through the garbage a little bit more quickly than Ty can send it right now. Never mind, he sends a nice combo storm and almost tops out Master Shadow. Um, Master Shadow making that clear before he can be topped out. Wow, that was an interesting garbage layering from the combos right there. Um, that, that tower on Master Shadow's side of the well there. Almost creating a very awkward situation for him, but he manages to work through it. Ty, meanwhile, um, trying to transition his way through a factory garbage and Reggie trying to get off me right now okay bye Reggie you don't want to co-commentate <laughs> the quarterfinals alrighty so let's see here uh, in terms of garbage output Master Shadow currently has a bit of an advantage he's hovering at around 23 24 garbage per minute um, meanwhile, Ty at around 21, 22 garbage per minute. Um, however, the total damage output is in favor of Master Shadow right now. Oh, what what is Ty doing? What is he doing? Oh no, that miss swap was unfortunate. He was going to make those yellows as a clear, but he just did not swap it the right direction. That is unfortunate. And we are moving on to game number three, Advantage Master Shadow. But uh, Ty, still plenty of opportunity to bring this one back. Alright, we've got a nice chain coming in from Master Shadow right here. That's going to top out Ty very nicely as he is playing a uh, rather high stack at the moment. Um, playing at the high stack defense is a valid and known strategy. Um, it is quite risky though. The idea being that um, you spend less time watching your garbage pop so that you can actually um, do other things, making clears and so forth. Um, because less garbage is actually on screen, it spends less time physically in the popping animation. And so it allows you to clear garbage quicker. It allows you to send uh, garbage to your opponent more quickly. However, because you're playing high stack, you're intentionally giving yourself less time um, to make reactions to the garbage. Um, Oh, Master Shadow getting hit by that little tiny four combo, what we like to call uh, the shake reset. He had a large um, garbage block that was giving him a lot of shake time, but then that little tiny garbage block fell on top, and the last garbage block that falls on your um, stack right there will determine how much shake time you get when you down stack. And so that little tiny four combo reset the shake time that he had. He sort of reset. It's not really a reset. Oh, but speaking of which, those little four combos, they give you hardly any time to react whatsoever. Master Shadow had a combo set up, but he just didn't have the stop time. And it falls down, and now Ty equaling the board two to two. That's why it can be very powerful to send a large garbage block and then follow it up with combos. Even just one small combo, as long as it tops out, it can give that small amount of stop time, take your opponent off guard, and can get you a quick and easy victory. 
just like we just saw. However, it does take a little bit of luck and a good amount of timing to pull off a trick like that. It can be very hard as your opponent um, can influence the timing at which combos fall by making clears and chains and things like that, because as long as they're making clears, no more garbage can fall. You've seen those nasty, nasty combo storms that we've been seeing all this event. Um, in the middle of those falling, at any time you can interrupt it by making a clear, and they will simply stop falling, those garbage blocks. And in that case, you can reduce the amount of pressure on yourself by not allowing yourself to be topped out, not allowing yourself to end up with way too many panels than you know how to do deal with. So every strategy has a good offense, but there are ways to defend against each strategy. And this is no more clear than when you watch Grandmasters play this game because they will go for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. They will have a first to five set that lasts 40 minutes. It's really quite amazing to watch Grandmasters. Oh, that's an unfortunate miss swap from Master Shadow. He had the uh, four combo lined up, but he was just not able to get it there. A little bit of mechanical inconsistency there. Like I said, one little mistake like that can cost you the game at this high level. So now it is Ty with the lead at three points. He brought it back from a two-point deficit, and now he is the one leading. Will he be able to keep this lead going into the final two games? We're currently on game number six. And I'm being asked a question in Discord. got Master Shadow sending a large, large boy, uh, a massive lad, as we like to say in the community. But Ty is playing that high stack defense right now. He's going to try and clear through that garbage as quickly as possible. And there is no garbage on screen, but we know it's up there. There's a lot of garbage up there. It's just a question of can Ty work through it? Oh wow, that beautiful disjointed combo from Ty right there. It's going to save him a lot of uh, stop time while also continuing to keep the pressure on Master Shadow. All right, Ty is just trying to work his stack down. He almost makes a miss swap error there, but he luckily had some stop time to deal with it. He downstacks so that he can get the garbage clear with that um, combo. Uh, meanwhile, Master Shadow... Ooh, that was a bit dangerous with the four combo falling on top, but he was able to... <clears throat> he, excuse me. He was able to tank it. Meanwhile, Ty still playing that risky high stack defense style, and it is working for him this game. Is this going to be his strategy going forward? We shall see. He has a clear lined up and ready to go already. And meanwhile, as he waits for the next volley to fall down, he's just making clears, he's making chains, he's making combos, making sure he buys himself enough time to realistically react to all of these um, next blocks that are going to be falling on top of him. And now this is an interesting scenario for Ty. He sets up 
Oh my goodness, Master Shadow, you can just barely see it on the top right. He got a plus four garbage. Um, a four combo garbage, that is. Um, in the panel community, we tend to notate our combos with a plus in front and our chained with an X in front. So all the official games will say chain times two times three times four and all that. And then Planet Puzzle League um, on the Nintendo DS introduced the plus notation for combos. So sometimes you will hear players such as myself refer to combos as a plus four or a plus eight or a plus seven. If you hear someone saying plus four, for example, that means a four combo. It's just a little bit easier to say and a, a lot easier to type out as well. So currently neither player is topped out. Uh, Master Shadow was waiting for the next volley of garbage to fall before he made his clear, which is quite smart. Um, you don't want to be messing up your board by making clears and things um, right before your opponent drops garbage. And now it looks like Master Shadow is responding in kind to Ty. He sees him playing max stat, max, um, yeah, high stack defense right here. And he says, you know what? All right, I'll match you. We're in the semifinals of the expert tournament. We can both play at that game. And now both players playing that risk, risky, but very rewarding high stack defense play style. Master Shadow does go down a little bit. He had to chain and down stack a little bit. So he's no longer at the high stack defense. Ooh, at the two minute mark, Pokemon Master Shadow has a couple of those shock panels in the bottom left corner of his stack. Oh no! Oh, that four combo garbage getting down to the bottom right of Pokemon Master Shadow's stack and just dealing some brutal damage to him. Some, some emotional damage right there. Mental psionic damage and tie is going to take it that was amazing so ty bringing it up against pokemaster shadow and he will be going up against gct in the semi-finals but first we will be having chaos 952 versus epic yoshi Here we go. Ah, oh, looks like they started without me. <clears throat> okay, so it looks like Chaos already has a single win. There was a 16 combo? Oh, there was. While I was busy typing chaos, hopping a 16 combo. Did he do the uh, compota ladder? Those of you in chat who knows what that means. Did he do the compota opening? That's something I need to make a video about someday. It's so much fun. The compota combo storm. <laughs> no, he, he didn't, no, yeah, that's true, Newsy, that's true, never mind, I can't deny that, that's what happened, oh no, what happened there, Chaos? That was a bit of a miss swap right there, a little bit unfortunate, the positioning of those blues. Ooh, that's quite an opener from Epic Yoshi right there. A pretty large chain with some combos on top once those combos fall. Oh, but only one of them fell. Hmm. That could have been a pretty gnarly 
Yes, I just said gnarly. It's 2023, but I just said it. Could have been pretty gnarly from uh, Epic Yoshi right there. Oh, but speaking of, Epic Yoshi is the one who got uh, gnarlyed. He got he got all gnarly, man. <laughs> and now it is one to two already. We are on game four of this first to five set. Who is going to take this and move on to the semifinals? Make your votes. Are there any are there any people in the chat with uh, mod privileges who can who can start a prediction? Does anybody want to predict and vote who you think is going to win? Maybe we'll do that for the next set because this one is already like started. You know, wouldn't be fair to start a prediction on this. <laughs> It's not 2023 until a radical is thrown in there. Oh, that was a radical defeat by chaos right there. <laughs> I'll I'll look for a legitimate opportunity to throw in radical. Okay, well already here's one. This is quite a radical chain from Epic Yoshi. It's like a uh, radical train from that Sonic Sonic 06, Radical Train. Radical Chain. Okay, see, this is what always happens. The commentators of the tournaments always just start going into memes. I'm not going into memes today. Look at that combo storm on Epic Yoshi's side. Luckily, he was not topped out. I mean, he gets lots of plus fours. Looks like he's playing as the uh, Planet Puzzly character. That's why he has a dark background. Buster's catchphrases are cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and the bomb.com. Are those the things I say? <laughs> That's bomb.com. I've probably said bomb.com at some point on stream, but I'm not that cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, okay? I prefer Golden Crisp. Stop distracting me! You already did the emotional damage. That's tr that's true. As the speed one more line, as the speedrunning community would say, says Ty. <laughs> as long as I'm being entertaining, okay? You know, sometimes. Oh no! That was an unfortunate death by Epic Yoshi. It was a uh, chaos making use of those four combos to create the very small shake time. As I've been mentioning this whole stream, it's very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. And once again, Chaos taking an early victory with those short stop times. Epic Yoshi has got to be a little bit demoralized after that one. But he still has a chance to bring it back. It is match point for Chaos. It might be a little hard. But Chaos does still have a chance here. Ooh, that's a bit unfortunate with the uh, plus four garbage falling down like that, but he manages to get the clear. He gets a... Ooh, some nice chains and combos going on there. If he can live until that falls onto his opponent. Oh, but Chaos also making some quite interesting combos right there. And now look at this. Chaos dealing with some factory garbage. Oh, he had to act very quickly there to get it. And meanwhile, he is making the clears. He got it. And an 8 combo coming up from Epic Yoshi. He's playing very high stack right now. And looks like he's going to manage to make it through this. Making lots of combos. Both to send that little bit of pressure and also to create that precious stop time that he needs. Especially in this situation with a lot of panels where he needs to work his way down until he gets a clear for that garbage. And now Chaos, with a lot of time to decide, he is creating some different combos and different situations, cutting that chain nice and early, not wanting to go too far with his chains because he does not want to create extra stop time for his opponent. He wants to create more pressure by sending small chains, small combos, keeping him topped out with those, trying to create uh, less shake time, um, as well as awkward situations just like that. And Chaos 
taking game seven for the W. Very well played to Chaos. And unfortunately, our good friend uh, Epic Yoshi will be sent home. But it was a very good game. Let's take a look at the updated bracket here. Well, it's not updated quite yet. But we have Pokemaster Shadow and Ty. Winner going up against GCT. And now we will have the winner of Chaos and Epic Yoshi going up against Ultra Fighter. Let's heat it up. Nothing's beating AppleNet Cinema. Oh, I got everyone talking about um, cereal in the chat right now. <laughs> Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> All right, I am keeping an eye on the uh, Discord chat here to see when the next match will be starting. In the meanwhile, you guys, who is your favorite Pokemon Puzzle League character? Wrong answers only. <laughs> or right answers. You can pet, You can put whoever you want. Favorite Pokemon Puzzle League character? Personally, I think it's got to be Blaine. You know, because when you're hot, you're hot. And he says it. He says what we're all thinking. Blarg. Blarg is not a Pokemon Puzzle League character. <laughs> Blarg is a Tetris Attack character. It's different. Blaine says Dialon. Same. Same. Oh, so close. You know why he says that? It's because he's cano canonically supposed to be a quiz master. But but then he walks it back and says, True, Blarg is superior. For me, it's Erica, Misty, or Sabrina, says Ty. Ty into the ladies. I see how it is. <laughs> no, no, I get it. You know, Erica pretty fine, okay? <laughs> but Misty is a good meme, especially with Horsey. Good battle! Horsey! Horsey! Good battle! It's a good meme. And I also like it when Erica says, Give up! And I say, No, no, I'll never give up. Sabrina says something like that too. What does she say? She says something like that. Where where is our uh next match you guys? Okay, I've seen you guys say your favorite Pokemon Puzzle League character and and you guys are saying Blarg for your favorite Tetris attack character. So then who is your <laughs> Oh yeah, told you so. You won't. He's the key. I told you so. You know, like your your little sister when when your mom sides with her. I told you so. Well, shut up, Sabrina. Shut up. You're doing a treason. You're being the FBI. It's a deep cut right there. Lorelai and Tracy says Newsy. <laughs> oh, yeah. When Lorelai. Hi, a cutie. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so we've got our next cut. It is going to be GCT versus Ty. I'm just going to wait for them to meet up in the character select. I'm Gary. <laughs> I do a pretty good uh, Gary cackle right there. You, you guys have told me your favorite Pokemon Puzzle League and Tetris Attack. How about um, Panel Day Poem? Which you... Which fairy is your favorite? It can be from the SNES game or the GameCube game. Which is your favorite fairy? You got any favorites? Okay, it looks like we are waiting on... Okay, here we go. All right, we're in. Lip for me. Lip is a good one. Lip is a classic. I also like Furl. 
since I'm a Buster Beach side, I have to say that I like the the water the water themed ones as well. All right, looks like we are about ready to get started. They're typing good luck, have fun in the chat. GCT says, no rush, it's only 1 a.m. for me. <laughs> All right, here we go. On the left, it is the German superstar. Make some noise for GCT. And on the right, we have the speedrunning legend. It is none other than Ty. Let's make some noise for these competitors as we go into the semifinals. You love this overlay? I do too. It is in game now, thanks to the one and only wonderful Jambox. It's really cool. I hope it makes it into the official game at some point. At least the ability to be able to do this. Oh, that was close for Ty, but he manages to make the uh, clear. GCT not quite topped out, but he's also playing very low. But with all of those combos he just popped, he has a lot of resources on board. Oh, prediction for finals? Yes. Go for it. I forgot about the prediction. I can't actually do it because I've got uh, the restream chat going. It's not the actual Twitch chat on my interface here. Because I'm also streaming to the uh, Tetris Attack Online YouTube page right now. So I, I can't um, do any of that stuff. You got 60 seconds. Oh boy. Get in your predictions, ladies and gentlemen. Who's going to win? Alright, this match is coming up on the two-minute mark. Both players are looking pretty even in terms of garbage output. Ty a little bit higher, but both players pretty much at the same. Oh, but GCT and now Ty also taking some garbage to the face. And Ty was not able to react to those uh for garbage and uh Galadic, you're welcome for us indulging your gambling addiction. I mean there's nothing you can even use your channel points for except for the usual generic like oh highlight my message send a message in sub only mode which like who uses sub only mode right? Not us. Everyone gets to chat here. Ooh that was a quick one. GCT going up 2-0 against Ty really quite quickly. Um, GCT opening up with a bunch of combos. Is, but Ty also sending a, a pretty nasty car, uh, combo storm right there. That was pretty funny to listen to. It's like a machine gun sometimes, those combo storms. It's very... Very intimidating. You cannot handle my most intimidating presence. It's like a JoJo stand. Intimidating presence. <laughs> I like the adrenaline. Says Galadic. Points refunded? No. Rip adrenaline. What's going on with the with the prediction? What the prediction doing? You guys, you guys all have to gamble in the prediction, okay? You have to do the gamba. And then when you lose, you're obligated to go into the chat and type no in all caps. No one bet against him. Well, all of you need to bet against him. I can't do it. I'm the streamer. I'm busy, you guys. I'm busy, you guys. Come on, you guys. <laughs> you prefer to do only casual gamba? Well, you know what? Casual is not... It's not casual Friday. Alright? It's not casual gamba Friday. It's casual... 
vote, I mean gamble, gamble your house away, gamble the deed to your property Saturday. Yeah, ranked Gamba. Only cowards play casual Gamba. You have to play ranked Gamba. Only ranked Gamba or Riot. And Ty taking his first game just past the two minute mark. Putting himself on the board. Looks like it's time to get serious for these players. And that was quite an opener from Ty right there. Um, large uh, garbage from GCT. There were a lot of combos about to fall. I saw that um, garbage telegraph. As soon as GCT lets um, his stop time run out for even a moment. Oh no! A bit of bad decision making on GCT's part there. Just a small little mistake. And it was enough to seal that game. And now it is two against two. Tie with the uh, <clears throat> tie. He's tied it up. Two to two. Glad I can't bet my points because of region difference. <laughs> because if if you if you uh, had simulated gambling, you'd have to rate your Pokemon game M for mature. You know, you guys are the reason that we don't have slots in Pokemon anymore. <laughs> Speaking of Pokemon, we've got uh, Ty playing as Team Rocket. GCT is currently topped out. He doesn't have a clear. Oh, but he finds one just in the nick of time. He did not have any more time to spare on that one. He manages to get there. <laughs> Um, Ty in a pretty good situation right here, and he's just barely not topped out. Uh, GCT is struggling just a little bit to um, keep himself in the clear. But he does need to send just that little bit more garbage to keep Ty topped out. The easy way out there is to just send a large chain, but of course, when you do that, you're committing for a long haul because you're um, relying on your opponent to spend the time to work through that. And then usually the follow-up for a large chain is to create a combo storm behind it so that once they finally work through all of that garbage, just like that, you can see on Ty's board, lots of combos falling. And Ty is doing his best to mitigate the damage, but there's just going to be more and more on top of it. There it is. And as long as GCT doesn't send any chains, um, oh, the combos will fall. He does send one small chain there, creating that uh, factory type situation. Meanwhile, GCT is not topped out whatsoever. He's actually quite low. Um, Ty is doing his best to send extra garbage. And GCT is a bit topped out here, but he's also on the uh, front foot here. He's able to find clears in time. Um, Ty also has a lot of time to spare. However, because of that combo storm, he now is in an awkward situation, but he does manage to find the clear. Um... That's another strength of these combo storms. When your opponent goes to make the clear, they end up with a whole bunch of panels above that they need to deal with. And they need to organize them as quickly as possible so that they can get a clear ready for the next volley. Because it is relentless at this high level. We are passing the 3 minute and 24 second mark, but unfortunately GCT does not last quite that long in tie is taking his third win of the set. As a quick reminder, these are first to five, and we are now in the final bracket. Single elimination. Uh, 
All right, looks like GCT in a better spot here, sending a little bit more garbage. But now Ty working on those chains, but almost messes up his clear there, but he manages to get it just in time. Okay, being nice and patient there, waiting for the clear to finish before he makes his move. Um, buying as much time as possible. Time is of the essence when you're playing this game. The more time you can buy, the uh, more time you give your opponent to make a mistake. And sometimes at a high level, ooh, Ty getting a little bit greedy with that 8 combo, but he manages to make it work. But he does need to send a little bit more garbage here because GCT is uh, playing not topped out. And meanwhile, uh, Ty is working through a lot of garbage here. Let's see, that, ooh, that little 4 combo could end up being dangerous. Okay, GCT does manage to find a clear on it. So he does not have to worry about that. And unfortunately, Ty gets hit by the little teen, teeny tiny combo storm. And he was not able to find a reaction. And now it is back to a tied game, 3-3. Three to three. This game, this match, could go in either direction at this point in time. It's very exciting to see during the expert tournament. Ty throwing in some nicely done combos. <clears throat> Let's see, looks like Ty getting ready, yep, to match those light blues. Now Ty is creating some chains, oh, but he does not continue that chain, but he has the stop time now because of it to find a clear onto that next um, layer of garbage. Ooh, Ty in a strange and awkward position right here. Can he find a clear in time? He makes a chain and he's just barely able to edge out a clear there. Ah, Ty going for the second tier clear. Waits for the garbage to fall on top so that he can clear that as well. Very well played by him. Uh, but meanwhile, he needs to continue sending garbage because GCT is not under much pressure. There we go. He drops a rather large chain on him. It's not quite enough to top him out, though. Maybe with the combo pressure on top, and there it is. The next chain looks like a 5 chain that he sent. Maybe a 4 chain. Did I say a pun? I'm trying not to say puns. <laughs> oh, tied up. Well, that, that was... How, how can I avoid saying that? It's literally tied up. <laughs> Speaking of which, Ty with the uh, 8 combo right there. That's going to look very nice once it falls. There it is. GCT hates to see it, but uh, fortunately he's able to find the clear in time. Let's see. Neither player currently topped out, but there's a lot of garbage waiting to fall. Ty getting topped out by a nice combo storm. Not a lot of uh, four combos in there, so it's good layering. Ty sending that nice four chain. Um, threes and fours are very nice for that factory style layering that we were mentioning earlier. A good strategy in high level panel attack. Targeting the low amount of time that you have to react to things on level 10. Alright. Ty needs to find a clear, and he does really quite quickly. And now GCT finding a chain into the clear right there. Now he's going to set up a 4 combo into the chain. Oh my goodness. Will he be able to find a clear? There it is. He just barely makes it in time. He does not have any stop time. He finds the next clear. He still does not have much stop time whatsoever. He finds the other clear. He needs to bring that yellow over. Okay, he's going to have time, and now he's setting up a bit of a transition. He makes a chain and goes to tier 2 to make the clears. Makes two separate clears on the second tier, and now he's making a large chain. 
just trying to make stop time for himself, keep himself alive, but that works out in his favor because Ty needed to have some more garbage if he wanted to continue to pressure his opponents. And now Ty has a six combo setup as he makes the chain into the transition here. The combo storm falling on GCT, but he had a clear ready, but unfortunately Ty was not able to find a clear for that next combo storm that fell down. At, it wasn't even really a combo storm, it was just that singular uh, four combo. Those can be very deadly despite their small appearance. So now it is match point for GCT, but Ty, only one point behind, he still has every opportunity to bring this one back. Will he be able to squeeze out that victory from behind? The back and forth, what a nail biter. Indeed, Newsy. Indeed. No matter the outcome of this match, it is a banger. Alright, neither player quite topped out. GCT is going to be hit by a large amount of garbage just as soon as he stops clearing, so he wants to make sure he's ready for it. And... Oh, I don't quite see a clear for him. Oh, but luckily he was not in too much danger there. He manages to make a clear and prevent the combos from falling. Wow, that was some lucky garbage transitions right there. All of those blues and light blues created a free six combo for GCT right there. Looks very pretty as well. You love to see those those patterns in panel. Oh, that was going to be a nice a nice little combo for Ty right there, buddy. He he decided he did not want to use that many panels to send um, the small amount of damage that he was going to get off of that combo. Which is very smart. You want to uh, conserve your resources and use them wisely in this game. <laughs> because if you chain away combo... Oh! GCT getting the shock panel garbage. You see the metal garbage on top of Ty. That works as a free uh, factory. Uh-oh, Ty, you better find a clear. Okay, he finds it, and now he's able to do clear past the metal garbage. Interesting that the uh, metal garbage is not showing in the analytics on the side. I thought that was added a while ago, but maybe not. Maybe it's uh, in the feature request stage. <coughs> I think it counts towards your, your garbage per minute and all that now. But yeah, it's very rare to see the shock garbage. The metal garbage there, it's called a shock garbage. The excl exclamation point blocks, commonly known as shock blocks. I'm not sure where the name comes from. <laughs> I think there's an official game that calls him that, but anyway, GCT... Yeah, he has plenty of stop time now. He was low on stop time, but now Ty is the one who is low on stop time. Um, but he manages to find a chain. Alright, both players in a pretty good position right now. It's just down to um, who takes the first big combo storm and gets put in a an awkward situation. Alright, Ty is creating chains, creating um, combos, creating stop time for himself. Setting up his combos and his chains on his side for the next few seconds. Meanwhile, GCT is doing the same. He was not topped out, however, he had to prepare himself for that next bit of garbage and he was prepared. He gets a nice slide right there. A cool little bit of frame tech. Not quite frame perfect, but does take a very uh, precise input to get those slides. And now he gets... Oh no! While I was looking at GCT, Ty, unfortunately, takes a loss. And that is going to be match point 
for GCT. Now that was truly a good game. Well played to both competitors. All right. Now we will be moving on to the bronze match between uh, the semifinal losers, um, Ty and Chaos, I believe. Um, that is up to Chaos, as he is the tournament organizer here. He's currently deciding. Oh, look, it's, uh, it's Alcoon, but he's keyboard knight Coon now. Alcoon is a very strong uh, competitor. He's not playing in this tournament today, which is unfortunate. I would love to see him play. Maybe in the next one. Chaos says, if you want, for the third place match. <laughs> if you want, hmm. Guess we'll play then, says GCT. GCT versus Ultra Fighter for the finals. And Ty versus Chaos for the third place match. Um, I guess Ultra Fighter versus GCT. They're they're still talking in the Discord. Oh, well, we've got the bronze match prediction. We bet on the other prediction. Well, if there's another prediction, I mean, come on, we gotta... <laughs> All right. It looks like we may be doing a third place match. Chaos is letting us know. All right. We're doing a third place match. You guys will get to do your gamba. Make your predictions, ladies and gentlemen. Make your predictions. Here we go. And Reggie has jumped down again. He keeps jumping up and down throughout the day. <laughs> Hype! All right, Ty versus Chaos. Who will take the third place match? Hey, Chaos, you're on casual. You're on casual. This is not... A casual tournament. It's fine. You can play on casual. So one bet on Ty so that I don't have to refund points again. <laughs> Nobody did. Come on. Nobody wants to play the Gamba. I'm going to have to add some like soundboard stuff to the, the channel points so that you all have a reason to want to farm uh, channel points. I'll put one where you when you get like a hundred thousand you can spend them to get uh oh they're asking if I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Here we go. This is the third placed match bronze medal goes to the winner of this match on your left it is the tournament organizer himself make some noise for chaos 952 and on the right it is the speedrunner legend the old school player of the community make some noise for ty mini compota it was a plus nine. Very nice. All right. Let's make it happen. So we've got Ty versus Chaos. Ty is pretty high stack. Oh my goodness. I thought he didn't have time for what he was doing just there. He manages to make it work. He's very low stack at the moment. Needs to be uh, careful not to spend too many panels here. Although Ty is usually pretty good about that. Um, he manages to get the transition. Um, he can get a second tier clear. It's not second tier anymore, but 
at the time it was. And he's going to hit those greens. There we go. Meanwhile, Chaos, now he's topped out. Um, he's going to find those clears and some nice combos. A couple of five combos. Very nice. Oh, that was unfortunate. He was... He had a little bit of a tower on the side. Oh, not quite able to find the garbage chain. Uh, but luckily able to... Well, not even luckily, skillfully. Oh no! Did you guys see that? He got, he got the clear, but he stealthed it back out. Oh no! How unfortunate. Chaos. Losing the first game against Ty, but remember it is still a first to five set. Oh my goodness! Chaos, is he tired? Is it the tournament nerves? Will he be able to come back from this? Come on, Chaos, we believe in you. You can do it. Bronze is bronze in the expert tournament is nothing to sneeze at. It's still worth fighting for. Taking the extra time to make that uh, eight combo. Now he's getting the five combo in the chain. Oh, that was unfortunate. He had some reds lined up to clear, but he tried to downstack uh, anyway. And that one cost him the game. And now it is 3-0 in favor of Ty. Will Chaos be able to bring this one back? It's looking like he may be running a little bit low on the energy tanks here. But you never know. It's not over until it's over. <laughs> Galadic getting points back again. Is he beating you up, Musical? Mu I, th I think that's the first time I've ever tried to say your name out loud. Musical. Mus musical? 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 I don't know how I'm supposed to pronounce that. Should I just say Michael? <laughs> Rebid of <laughs> pronounced musical. Okay, musical. I'll, I'll I will remember that. Like the Telltale video games, Buster will remember that in the corner, and then it ends up not actually meaning anything. It doesn't doesn't change anything in the story. Buster will remember that. <clears throat> hey, who are you? What? Stop it. Stop it. Why are you making fun of me? Stop it. I am a professional commentator, okay? Professional. I'm doing my job as long as I'm entertaining, and I think I'm doing that. <laughs> Alright, this match is running a little longer than the last ones. I think maybe Chaos has found his fire again. We are coming up to the two minute mark. I'm ignoring you, chat. I'm ignoring you. No, this is not a mutiny. This is not a mutiny, okay? You will not mutiny on my on my ship. On my Christian YouTube channel, okay? There will be no mutinies. The state of this castle is unacceptable! And Ty takes game number four during the mutiny. Now I understand why everyone devolves into memes. It's not our fault, it's the chat. The chat... The chat makes us. The chat makes us do it. <laughs> the chat causes a mutiny. And then the memes start coming out. <laughs> well, you guys promise me you'll at least take the Grand Finals match seriously. That's what I want to take seriously. We should take third place match seriously too. This is the expert monthly, you know? It's it's not so easy to get third place in the expert monthly. Even ignoring the fact nice plus seven nerd. <clears throat> even ignoring the fact that we don't have many GMs participating this month. Chaos putting himself on the board. Oh yeah. 
I am so hyped for that. We do it for the fans, says Newsy. It's for the fans, all right? All of you guys watching the VOD at home, Newsy wants you to know that she does it for the fans. Um, in other words, it is Newsy's fault. Whatever it is, doesn't matter what it is. If you have a problem with it, uh, Newsy's fault. It was Newsy, it was not me. <laughs> Plus seven inch of death pog. <laughs> that's that's what I say to myself whenever I'm spectating a match and I see someone do a plus seven, I say, nice plus seven, nerd! You know, it's not very nice to say out loud. But it's fine when I'm just watching a match by myself, right? It's fine. <laughs> I mean, in this case, I'm streaming live, and there will be... A VOD. Oh no! Oh, that was very close, Ty. You almost died to that miss swap, but you managed to keep it going here. Both players in a very dangerous situation topped out. Oh my goodness. Chaos in a very uh, chaotic indeed situation. Oh, Ty, what are you doing? Okay, he gets the chain. Very nice. Oh, this is a strange... Okay, he manages to make it work. This is the bread and butter of high level panel. Just trying to put your opponent into strange situations, uh, hoping that the combo storms will create so many random panels here and there. And just trying to rely on the RNG to mess you up. But what happened there, Ty? And t uh, Chaos takes a second game off of Ty. Could this be a comeback? You never know until it's over. However, both players are showing signs of nerves. Signs of fatigue. Oh my goodness. Chaos just barely managing to do that down stack in time. Signs of fatigue indeed. Have her both players continuing to survive past the 30 second mark. We haven't seen any game ending blunders just yet. Ty uh, making the time to create a nice plus six combo. And both players doing a good job finding those garbage clears. And meanwhile, they are making sure to get enough stop time from their chains and combos so that they do not lose to a stray four combo landing on the top of their stack. That's a nice combo chain coming out from Chaos. That could create a nice and interesting uh, factory sort of situation for Ty right here. Oh, it is indeed. Ah, but Ty manages to find some very nice clears. In fact, multiple after the fact. A plus two plus fives, a times three chain. That is some nice noise layering coming out from Ty right now. Ty playing that high stack defense that he's been playing with the entire game. It takes a lot of mental fortitude to play at that uh, height. But both players are making short work of each other's garbage right now. Noise. Noise. Yes. <laughs> Chaos with no garbage on the board, but as soon as he stops making clears, there it is. It falls right away. Looks like Chaos playing really quite fast. 430 APM. Uh, Ty also at 420, just under 420, and, but he does not have the APM to downstack that tower, and Chaos takes a third game. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going into game number eight. Will this be a game nine situation? 
Chaos is looking more and more likely by the second to make this comeback. At first it looked like he had some of those tournament nerves, but I think he is having a second wind right now. And that is a lucky garbage transition for Ty. He gets that red right where he needs it. He does not need to move his panels in any way whatsoever. And so he can focus on other parts of the board. Um, however, Chaos not quite topped out. Ty is going to need to send a little more garbage. He is pretty far behind in terms of garbage output on this game. Uh, Chaos, meanwhile, is creating a lot of pressure for Ty. That was almost a deadly miss swap for Ty, but he manages. Um, he had some time to spare right there. Now he downstacks, goes for the four combo into the garbage clear, and now uh, Reggie is back on my on my lap. Oh, I thought Chaos was going to run out of time there, but he just barely manages to to eke it out. And he gets the clear. Looks like he was trying to make another um, combo chain with those purples there. But it doesn't matter. Chaos taking game four. And ladies and gentlemen, our bronze match is going to a gr game nine scenario. Chaos making a comeback here from so far behind. And now look at this opener chain that he's got. A times eight, a times nine, times ten. <coughs> oh my goodness. Ty is going to have a field day working through all of that. And meanwhile, Ty hasn't sent hardly anything. Chaos is free. Look at this, he's just preparing his combo storms. Nice, plus seven. <laughs> he's sending times three, plus four. He's trying to create a combo storm. He's trying to create a factory. He's doing everything in his power to capitalize on this advantage from the opening. And it's going to take Ty a very long time, even with his uh, high stack defense playstyle, to eat through all of that garbage that very, very large chain. It's not going to be terribly hard to defend against with all the shake time. However, it is going to take a very long time to get through. And it looks like he does finally chew through that garbage, but now here come all of the combos. And meanwhile, Chaos is still under very little pressure and it works! Chaos with the comeback of the month! Ladies and gentlemen, taking it 5-4 to four against Ty from quite a deficit, coming back all the way to win the bronze medal. Ladies and gentlemen, this tournament has been quite a banger. Also, since when has Compota been 1549? Is somebody name sniping here? That was very cool. Musical setting up the prediction for grand finals chaos now that was a performance the reverse sweep no not a reverse sweep dog in the grass it's not a it's not a sweep he he barely took that <laughs> anyway wow you love to see it all right well we are ready I just got to let him know in the Discord that I am ready. Go ahead, sleepyhead, says Chaos. <laughs> All right. Now, this is interesting. Ultra Fighter versus GCT. Both of these players are German. It is like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. in Germany. Just goes to show uh, Everyone should hold tournaments in the middle of the night, the dead of night, 2 a.m. Okay, looks like we have a little room loading glitch. GCT, just just let just ready up and stay, ready up and stay. Just stay ready. It'll start eventually.
One third. Oh, all right. Never mind. <laughs> I don't know anything. Um, all right. Game crashed. One sec. We are reopening the game. Okay, here we go. Luckily, that was nice and quick. Pog, we got a crash. Pog. All right. Luckily, we didn't miss too much. We are... We are 30 seconds in. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is your grand finals for this expert monthly tournament for June 2023. On your left, it is... The German legend, Ultra Fighter! And on your right, also hailing from the land of Germany, it is your meme master himself. He is GCT! GCT taking that first game as I introduce him. This is your grand finals, ladies and gentlemen. The first player to get five wins will be the grand champion. Now, GCT was last month's uh, winner of the expert tournament. So this will be GCT defending his title as the expert monthly champion. Will Ultra Fighter be able to take the crown or will GCT be defending his throne today what do you guys think what is what is this, what does the prediction look like in chat Ooh, i'll bet it's looking pretty stacked gct some of you guys may be regretting your gamba decisions did you guys bet the the deed to your house and your car keys on ultra fighter and regretting it right now i don't know but it is far too soon to make any judgments because it is still only game three and Ultra Fighter has every chance in the world to make a comeback. Ryan Rhino says, Pog, I'm going to be rich. <laughs> and Galadix says, miserable. Galadix says, vote guys, I will die. Oh, I die. Thank you, Flava. All right, GCT has topped out Ultra Fighter in a very pretty position right now. He does not have very much garbage whatsoever. Meanwhile, GCT is chewing through a lot of damage here. That's a lot of damage, and it works. Unfortunately, GCT not able to come back from that one, and Ultra Fighter puts himself on the board. Ooh, that was very interesting for Ultra Fighter. His chain was not going to continue, however... By doing a delay chain somewhere else on the board, he was able to continue his chain. A little uh, remote chain continuation. Very cool tech that you can do. But GCT also sending a pretty decent amount of garbage. However, look at that combo storm coming out from Ultra Fighter. Most of GCT's damage is in that 7 chain that he did. However, Ultra Fighter with, uh, well, he had the higher garbage output, but now GCT is bringing it back with those chains of his and lots of large combos. Um, you'll notice that sometimes it says 23.5, 24.5. Oh, wow! That was a combo. No, it was a combo chain. No wonder. That was a lot going on at once, though, on GCT's board. Lots of pop effects going off. Looked very pretty. It wasn't quite the largest uh, combo in the world, however, it was a lot of chains and combos going off at once. Very nice, the sync chains. GCT getting another one of those nice slides. He seems to be very good at those today. Oh, but Ultra Fighter! He just barely wasn't able to get the clear there. He had some yellows in position, but it just wasn't enough. Now it is one to three. We still have a couple of matches to go before GCT can clinch this one out. Will he be able to do it? He opens up with a very large 8 chain with a little tiny 4 combo on top. Will that 4 combo reset the shake time and cause havoc for Ultra Fighter? 
It remains to be seen. Ah, here comes another small chain on top. And that four combo remains in the garbage queue because uh, chain garbage will always fall first in panel attack. Ultra Fighter choosing to cut his chain early at that point right there, making sure he continues to send pressure to his opponent. And I don't see many things to clear with, unfortunate. And GCT is going to take game number four. This is looking like a pretty clean sweep. Will GCT easily defend his title? Or is Ultra Fighter going to bring it back and give him a run for his money? We've already seen some upset situations this tournament. And that was very close for Ultra Fighter. But he manages to make it work somehow, some way, just in the nick of time. And now he's getting ready to make lots of chains. He's trying to find that clear. He finds those greens. And he goes into the plus six chain combo into the garbage. He doesn't see anything that he can react to right there. He needs to get those greens over. Or Okay, he can use those as well. And he has the plus four for the clear. Meanwhile, on GCT's side, also under some pressure, he is going for some large chains. He may be going for those reds. No, he goes for the greens for the chain, or for the clear, rather. Goes for the nice delay chain. Meanwhile, both players are just tr trying to chain, send damage, and unfortunately, Ultra Fighter running out of stop time, and that is going to seal the deal. Ladies and gentlemen, your monthly panel attack expert tournament champion is... GCT! He defends his title and he will be keeping that trophy and that shiny Discord roll going into the next month. What a tournament. We had some banger matches, ladies and gentlemen. Minus 3k, let's go. <laughs> Galadic voting on the wrong person. Ryan Rhino, a plus 3.7k. Remember, you're, if you lose, you're supposed to say no. And if you win, you say yes. Ryan Rhino has 43k channel points. What a shame there's nothing to spend them on. <laughs> I'm sorry, Galadic. That, you know, when you play the Gamba, sometimes the Gamba plays you. You know? Everyone's flexing how many channel points they have in the chat right now. You know, you don't need anything to spend them on as long as you can flex how many you have, right? All right. Well, congratulations to GCT. That is a very well played tournament. All right. Well, that was very amazing. I want to thank each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart, both the competitors for coming and for the viewers for making this event what it is today. This is going to be one for the ages. Um, the VOD will be up on YouTube so you guys can watch back this video at any time. Find some of those banger games. And you're welcome for streaming, Ryan. It's been a while since we've had an official stream for one of the monthly tournaments. I'm going to hope to stream more of these more often. But all right, that is going to be it for this month's Expert Monthly. Keep an eye on the Tetris Attack Online Discord. I believe our next official tournament coming up will be the Novice in... Uh, July. So look forward to that. It's always a lot of fun watching those low level matches. But until next time, you guys remember to uh, give a follow to the Twitch channel, give a subscribe if you're on the Tetris Attack online YouTube channel, leave a like on the stream and video and all of that good stuff. But until next time, we'll be seeing you next month.